Hi everybody, this is George from the Eco Founder blog, and I'd like to thank you for taking a minute out of your day to join me as I show you how you can use the Lean Canvas as a planning tool for your business, all in under 10 minutes. You may be wondering, well, why did I create this video? Well, I understand that a lot of you are first time entrepreneurs and that launching your venture, it really can be tough. It's tough because when you're just starting out, it's hard to understand what your project is and how it will work. It's new and the pieces are still coming together. Plus I'm sure you'd like to have a better idea of how it all functions as a whole. I know you would like to organize your ideas in a way that it's easier to understand both for yourself and so that other people can understand your venture. Because maybe you need to explain your business and how it works to partners that's business partners, a business mentor, or even an early investor. Well, in this video, I'm going to explain exactly why you need to plan your business, and most importantly, I'm gonna show you how you can use the Lean Canvas to do this. So let's get started. So why do we need to plan in the first place? Well, planning is essential in every business. You need some sort of tool to describe the functions of your business. You need something to describe how these functions all fit together and how you can provide value to your customers and bring in revenue from providing that value, which is the underlying function of a business. The standard tool that most first-time entrepreneurs use is a business plan. But as it turns out, business plans are not the best tools for entrepreneurs because they are static which means they don't allow for the dynamic changes of any startup or growing business, business venture. They're not effective in practice. This is because markets change, business assumptions may be wrong, and competition is dynamic. And to be honest, they're just boring. They are traditionally long-winded documents, anywhere from 10 to 50 pages. They are primarily designed for consultants, customers, advisors, or investors and they're not made to be useful, actionable tools for entrepreneurs. So let's backtrack a little bit here and ask what really is the purpose of any planning tool? Well, I believe that the purpose of any planning tool is to be used as a guide for thinking and to steer our future actions. So if a method is boring and it becomes outdated, it really is useless. So why would we use a business plan? Uh, why would we use a business plan in the first place? So what we want to do instead, I mean, what really is the solution to this? It's the Lean Canvas. Okay, it's a one-page planning document that is an essential tool for startups. It tests the business assumptions in the Lean Startup method, and it allows you to make a lot of rapid changes to your business model. The Lean Canvas allows us to describe, design, challenge, invent, and to pivot our business model. It's simple. And we can see all the core areas of our business and how they fit together. This eliminates all the clutter because it's all on one page. We have everything in one place. And it's easy to put on the wall of your office or even use as an online document. Ash Maraj, the author of Running Lean recommends the following order to use the Lean Model Canvas. So now I'm going to teach you how exactly to use the canvas. So let's start off with the section one. Customer segments and the early adopters. Different groups, uh, so this is the customer segments are different groups that your business plans to serve. Okay, so different segments of customers. The second part here is the early adopters which is the first segment of those customers that you choose to target. For example, we have an energy efficient lighting product, such as a new LED light bulb, and they have decided that for their business, the first, the first uh, customer segment they would like to target are the small business owners, because they believe these are the most interested and easy to reach customers for the business. So let's move on to the second part, which is the problem and existing alternatives. 
what is the underlying customer problem that you are solving with this business and what solutions are you currently are, what solutions currently exist in the marketplace already for that customer problem okay so you want to fill out here exactly the underlying customer problem thirdly we're going to look at the unique value proposition of your business and we're going to try and refer to one high level concept your unique value proposition or your uvp is how you are going to serve your customer need that you've designated in a unique novel way so you really want to focus not only on the core benefit here, but on the customer's story of how you solve their problem and how your solution enrich the lives of your customers. Now to choose a high level analogy to fit your description, we're going to use an example here to describe how you would do this. An example would be for the energy efficient light bulb company that we talked about earlier. So they're targeting small business owners. So for their high level analogy, we could use something like, we are the tax break for small businesses only in the form of energy savings. Now it's not the best example, but I think you get the idea. So part four, the solution. This is how you, how you deliver on that value. It's important here to note that an MVP, which is a minimal viable product, is what you so you're gonna to have to note some sort of MVP here, okay? Now an MVP is the smallest solution that still delivers customer value. Ideally, you can offer enough to charge for your MVP, but most of the time it serves primarily as a learning tool for the business, so that you can learn more, and so that you can offer more customer value in the future because of your learning. Now. Here you want to list the top three features that you would need to include in your MVP. Channels. This is step five. You want to ask the question, what is the path to your customers and how will you build this path? You want to list here the ways that you will reach your customer segments. Fill out in this section just how you will reach your customers to get their attention and to build trust with them so that you may, so that they may give you permission to provide them with value in the form of your product because that's really what a transaction involves. Now step six here, we're going to look at the revenue streams. How will you charge for the value you provide in your business? You want to ask, is it a one-off cost, pay to use or subscription? There are a number of different payment methods so write this down here. Number seven, we're going to look at the cost structure. There are two forms of costs you want to jot down here. First is the fixed costs. Second is the variable costs. Now the fixed costs, these are the upfront investments that occur regardless of the level of production. The variable costs in contrast, these are the costs that increase with the level of production. So you might have a cost that increases by $1 per unit, something along those lines. Now step eight, this is the key metrics. Now in this section, we're gonna list down the different things that can show us how well we were doing in our business. It's difficult to measure success when you're in the early stages of a business as the focus should be on learning and customer testing rather than profit, initial profitability. But here we're gonna list down two metrics, a value metric and a success metric. How do you know so the first one is the value metric. How do you know that your idea has spread and worked? And for our example earlier, this could be a percentage of small businesses that are using our energy efficient light bulb. Now a success metric here could be a financial or me measurable uh, goal. So this could be something like $5 million a year in revenues within the next 10 years for your business. Now lastly, number nine, we're gonna look at the unfair advantage. This is how you will defend against competition. Sustainable unfair advantage is something that cannot easily be copied by competitors. So it could be something like being first to market, or it could be something like being a fast follower. You can leave this blank as it will come up over time. You'll be able to work it out. Now there it is. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. And thank you again today for joining me. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you again next time.